We're at the Olympic Basketball Stadium in Munich, Germany. We're here on the location of Rollerball, a new motion picture that's produced and directed by Norman Jewison, who is seated next to me, and it stars James Kahn. And uh, Norman, as I look behind me here, this doesn't look at all like a basketball stadium. What in the world have you done back here? Well, this was the, uh, this was the only circular stadium that we could find that we could get a hold of for this long period of time. So we've actually constructed this this track, which is an eighth of a mile in diameter uh, in this stadium, which was the Olympic uh, basketball stadium. Yes, and uh, it is at a terrific angle. What What is the degree of the, the Well, it's, the it's, grade it's, there? it's actually 18 degrees, but it looks a little... <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't feel like 18 degrees, I'm he sure. He insists that it's 18 degrees. <laughs> you know, Jimmy, I'm a skier, and when I saw the fall line on this, I thought, no way am I even going to walk down it in my stocking. Well, the 18 degrees that Norman refers to is the first four inches from the flat to, the, uh, <laughs> to that little black line there. The rest is about 30. Yes. Yeah. Now, tell us uh, just a little bit about this game of rollerball. It could be the game of the future, we understand. <laughs> well, the picture takes place about 30, 40 years from now, and it's played with uh, motorcycles and uh, skaters, roller skaters. Everybody's on wheels. Uh, moves very fast, uh, faster than ice hockey. It's about the fastest sport in the world, uh, as it's designed now. It has two goals, one on this side and one on the far side. And the, ob the uh, object of the game is to pick up a ball, feel the ball, and uh, put it in the goal of your opponent. And the ball is fired from a cannon around the edge of the track. And uh, at about uh, 150 miles an hour. Other than that, it's just a nice, simple little game. Well, the game is created for a diversion for the masses. Yes. Jimmy, you uh, obviously had to have some kind of preparation before you came over here to to do this skating role. What did you do and how long did you, did you take to prepare? I, uh, I uh, fell to my knees and prayed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the extent of my preparation. Uh, I was in the middle of another film over in the, the States when Norman and I got together over this. And uh, originally, we were going to uh, shoot it two months later, but we had some problems getting the hold, so I left that. and. Norman uh, had me skate with some of the stunt boys uh, after work at night, and we did. Uh, I, I skated a few times uh, on a flat track. You know, I had not skated before. And uh, I was doing pretty good on a flat track after three or four times. And then, of course, we came here and saw this and didn't know what it was, you know. I mean, it's a complete difference, you know, skating on that angle. Um, so Norman said, well, don't worry about it. you got plenty of time, you know. So I skated uh, an hour, and then we shot. <laughs> An hour was plenty of time oh, to yeah. Norman Jewison, huh? I, what did it feel like the first time you got up there on that incline? Well, I had one guy on the left of me and one guy on the right of me. And I, I felt like I just, you know, like I had two broken legs. Uh, but after a while, I'm, it's just a question of uh, treating it as if it were flat. You know, you just can't think of the bank. And you've got to uh, use speed. You know, you can't... Uh, it's better it. when you get up to speed. Yeah, when you have speed, it's not too terrific a problem but when you're just standing around a lot of our fights and stuff take place uh you know in stationary positions it's pretty huff the tough to uh to uh that's a real freudian for huff sam huff <laughs> <laughs> yeah to uh to uh, keep puff, your right? keep your feet right, it's like a little bit like ice hockey in that way if a fight develops or like an ice hockey uh, it's it's awkward for the players to to control themselves you know Jimmy, I see some white things here. Is this part of, of the uh, gear, or are there Yeah, this bandages? is part of the gear, and this is part of a, of a wound. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? Oh, Norman had me doing some stupid things, yeah. you know. He was dragging a, a biker whom he had uh, got a hold of, and he dragged him behind the motorcycle um, at about 20 miles an hour up the track. And then I thought it would be interesting to see the point of view of the man he was dragging which means he had then to drag a cameraman. So he dragged the cameraman and the camera and the batteries and... Uh, yeah, I had a hold of just one wheel, you know. I think it was kind of heavy. I, I somehow conned Norman into thinking that I was Superman or something. He keeps telling me he's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy, I, I want to tell you now, your, uh, your team is the Houston team in this film, Rollerball. 
And I'm right. a Texan, and I've come all the way here to cheer you on. So uh, you're in a game, you're in some sort of championship game with Tokyo, right? Uh, semi, yeah, that's the, the Tokyo uh, game is the semifinals, and the New York game is the finals. Okay. So we're we had, you're going to hang you. around for the length of it. <laughs> <laughs> we had 2,000 people in here last Saturday cheering on Houston, and so Houston's in the energy city, you see. So. Yes. Now this film has more to say than just to introduce people to a thrilling new sport that may or may not catch on. Norman, what what is the bottom line as far as what Rollerball is trying to say to the world? Well, I think it's trying. It's a film about the future, and it's uh, it's making a statement about the threat of corporate society. Uh, in our world, there are no countries. There's the control of only of multinational corporations. Six or seven corporations control society. Jimmy happens to play for the Houston team, which is an energy city, so it's an energy team, and the color is orange. There's food, there's housing, communication, transportation, luxury, and these are the corporations that control the world. Much like they do today. Jimmy, what does it say to you about professional sports, this role you play? Well, you know, I've played a, a little ball, and, uh, you know, my, I've been rodeoing for a while. Uh, but um, the, the thing that really grabbed me about it was not so much a story about the game, but it's a story about man's spirit uh, in a controlled society. It's a story about... Uh, a guy who's becoming a folk hero in a game that has never seen one because the violence of the game doesn't allow anybody any uh, longevity in it. And he uh, somehow has been around for seven or eight years and, and is becoming a folk hero. And uh, folk heroes breed revolution, and therefore uh, the corporate society tries to uh, get rid of him. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it is sounding any kind of a warning to the people who control professional sports today, Jim? Uh, the people who control professional sports? No, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I don't, think, uh, I don't think we're dealing much with that. We're dealing more with, uh, we're dealing with bigger uh, things than that. Uh, uh, we're dealing with uh, a corporate world. Which, uh, I think, yeah, and the, and the nature of the sport is gladiatorial. I think the comment is uh, perhaps like Rome when... Uh, when it reached its peak, uh, politically, economically, and artistically, that was when Saturday afternoon in the arena became the most violent. Well, we'll be looking forward to seeing this film, Rollerball, and I thank both of you for talking with us today here in Munich, Germany. Norman mm -hmm. Jewison, producer, director of Rollerball, United Artists Film, and James Kahn, the can't star. Wait. Can't wait to see it either. <laughs> <laughs>